So guys, we are going to discuss today uh, remaining part of study unit 10, right? So last time we discussed 10.3 topic, which was theory of constraint. So today we are going to talk about just in time inventory and lean resource management. It's a theoretical area. Then we will talk about enterprise resource planning and outsourcing. Okay, this is also a critical area. And then we have 10.4, which is called what? Capacity management. So here we go. Starting with first point, first topic, which is called what? Just in time inventory and lean resource management. So guys, let me give you examples. So we have actually a two types of uh, inventory management system broadly. The first system is called traditional inventory system. What is traditional? I can just give you example. For example, I am planning to produce 500 units in next month. Okay. So what I will do traditionally, I will store the inventory initially. I will arrange inventory in advance. Maybe I will keep in somewhere in the warehouse. Understood? And then once uh, we need inventory for the production. We can release the inventory from warehouse to the production. So traditionally what we were doing, we were building up the inventory first. Understood? And if you will build up the inventory, obviously you will have a storage cost. You have to incur storage cost. Maybe you will pay insurance cost also. Maybe you need certain employees uh, to take care of that inventory. Maybe you will incur heat and light expenses also. You will pay rent of the facility also. So there was storage related costs were there in the traditional inventory system. But now we have which system we are talking about. We are talking about just in time systems. So I will use the word JIT, just in time system. So what is JIT? JIT is another philosophy. As per JIT theory, we don't need to store the inventory. So we will order the inventory only at needed time, only at needed time when inventory is needed. So we will just order at that time and inventory will reach to the production and we will utilize it. So if you will follow this philosophy, so you can avoid storage cost also, you can avoid heat and light expenses also. We can avoid like uh, staff salaries who are dealing with the inventory. So, so many costs can be avoided. Now, just starting with the example, now let's assume if I will follow JIT system, if I want to follow JIT system, JIT system is not possible if your supplier is in USA and you, are, you need inventory in UAE, then maybe JIT will not follow, right or wrong? Maybe I want inventory right now. Obviously, inventory cannot be, you know, faxed from USA to the UA. So we, it takes time to deliver. So that is why the main important point is what? If we want to follow JIT system, so customers and suppliers, they must be situated. They must be very close to each other. For example, if this is the boundary wall, let's give I'm giving example. And here we have a Toyota company. And let's assume Toyota is buying tires from service company or maybe Bridgestone company. I'm just giving examples. So Toyota company, they need tires. Understood? And maybe tire supplier is different. So what Toyota will do, Toyota can make an arrangement with the supplier. Maybe the supplier can erect a plant and machinery like a service company. I'm as taking it as an example. Service is manufacturing a tires. So what they can do, they can have a contract with each other, right? They can have a contract with each other and they can erect, they can set up a factory close to each other. So whenever Toyota company needs tire, so service company can provide the tires on immediate basis. So it means it is possible only if, close, if supplier and customers are very close to each other. Understood? That and JIT system can be followed. Now this was the overview. Now let's start discussing the points which can be tested in your exam. So guys, here we go. JIT system, guys, just in time system, as I told you, uh, we have a two system. One is called traditional inventory system. And second, we have which system? JIT system. Under traditional inventory system, traditionally, where we store the inventory, 
we are treating inventory as a assets but jit will treat inventory as liability inventory as liability why because as per jit philosophy if you will store the inventory understood so it will become your liability instead of assets why liability because you have to incur storage cost facility cost heat and light expenses so many expenses we have to incur so that is why as per jit philosophy inventory should not be stored if you will store it will become a liability for the company understood don't think assets and liabilities in accounting point of view assets and liabilities from benefit point of view if it if it gives you loss it will become your liability if it gives you benefit then it is your asset so that is why under jit philosophy so inventory level should be zero what inventory level should be zero so you should not have a inventory then guys what are the main uh, purpose of the jit uh, or what are the main advantages of the jit number one the first they are telling you jit reduces what inventory levels that's why i told you idle inventory level is zero under jit philosophy okay so first point i have said is clear right assets versus liability point okay and then second what is the advantage so second advantage of jit system is what so you need to invest less amount in what idle assets what it means i can just give you example for example if i have an inventory maybe inventory will be used in next month or next year so if i will keep inventory in advance so it means i am going to invest in the idle assets which has no productive use so far because this inventory i need what next year so if you will follow jit so these investments you can remove this kind of investment and you can save your money you can invest somewhere else so that is where the advantage is what less investment in idle asset what is the next point reduction of storage, storage cost as i told you because in jit system you are not going to store any inventory next is what lower inventory taxes obviously if you will hold the inventory then maybe you will pay some tax on that if you don't hold the inventory maybe taxes can be avoided next is what Less less risk of obsolescence. You know, sometimes your inventory will become obsolete, out of outdated. Understood, guys. Understood. So this is what is called risk of obsolescences. Risk in risk can be reduced because you will you are not going to store Sorry. any inventory. Sorry. Yeah. Understood. Then what we have here next points. Point was you have to remember, guys. Jit system will also help you to improve what quality of the product. I will give you example. So these two points I'm explaining with the help of example. Let's let's assume we are labor people. If we know there are plenty of items are available in the stocks, maybe we will work carelessly, right or wrong. We know if one item will be sabotaged, I can brought another item from the stock because plenty of items are. available but in jit system you will order only needed inventory for example if you are manufacturing a car so maybe you will get only five car, five tires for a car right or wrong including one spare tires so five tires you will get so obviously you will work with more care because you don't have a resources to waste you don't have inventory to waste so that is why automatically your quality will enhance and also remember guys in jit system jit system just in time system our focus is not on the correction of defects our focus is not on Defect. correction of defects so i do the mistake and i'll correct it no our focus is on what on prevention of defects on what prevention, prevention of defects defective products right or wrong obviously we will think how you can think about the prevention now maybe your question you, you might have a question in your mind how you can focus on prevention of defects how defects can be removed prevention preventer measures which you can take for example obviously if you are using plant and machineries to manufacture the product so you will do timely maintenance also so it will not destroy your product during the production right or wrong so you automatically these kind of steps you can take right for example what's written here so we want what zero machine breakdowns we don't want production to be halted 
So what we can do? So zero machine breakdown can be achieved through what? Preventive maintenance, timely maintenance or advanced maintenance. Understood? So, so far, don't worry. Maybe it is a story, but you have to remember the points. I can find out the points. First is what? Just assume inventory is your liability, if you will, store. Then I told you certain advantages, like less investment in idle assets, less storage cost, less risk of obsolences. Understood? Then I told you in JIT, our focus is on high quality. Our focus will obviously divert from identification of defects to the prevention of the defects. Understood? And in JIT system, idle inventory level is what? Zero. Understood? In JIT system, we will order inventory only at needed time. Understood? Now, guys, here we have some objectives of JIT. If they will ask you to write maybe objectives in asset question, you should know. You should have the points to write. These are the objectives. What are the objectives? Number one, we want to get what? Higher productivity. Higher productivity, you can explain this way also. Like you want more production. How? By shortening the manufacturing cycle time. How? JIT can help you to reduce your production time. How? Obviously, if you're following JIT, like inventory is being ordered at needed time. And you are, let's say, manufacturing some units right now. You need certain material, immediately it will be available. The reason supplier is also very close to you. Understood? So it means production can be increased. And now think this way. If you are ordering material from other city or from other country, right or wrong, maybe it will take time. Sometimes due to poor inventory management. Maybe you are ordering on time, but it might be delayed due to any other unforeseen circumstances also. Understood? You got my point? So here, that is why our objective is what? To get higher productivity. Higher productivity means to say you don't need to wait for inventory. Inventory is available at needed times. So the labor will not waste time. Otherwise, if you are following traditional inventory system, maybe labor is sitting and waiting for inventory. It will reach and then they will start work. So obviously, when you are saving time, production will increase. And it will also reduce your what? Manufacturing cycle time production time second what reduce ordering cost why because transportation cost blah 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 these costs will be very less the reason is that supplier is very close to you otherwise if you are buying a material from other countries or other cities so there is a huge transportation cost also clearance cost also import duties also so by having jit arrangements ordering cost can also be reduced yeah. understood then what Reduced carrying cost, carrying cost means a holding cost, storage cost. Obviously, you don't store any inventory, so these costs can also be stored. These are the objectives also. And improved quality. By the way, these are same points which I told you. If they will ask you to write about it, you can write all these points. Understood? Ultimate goal is what? Increased competitiveness. You have to increase the product competitiveness. Understood? And higher profit. Obviously, if you will save cost. If you will save cost, your profit will automatically increase. Right or wrong? If you will focus on product, so your product competitiveness will also increase. If you will focus on quality. Right or wrong? Then what we have here? Then we have a certain features of JIT. You can remember point wise. No, no need to remember objectives and the features. No. What is the next point you can remember? You can remember the JIT is a pull system. Which system? Okay, there are two types of system. One is called push. Second is called what? Pull. Push, let me give you example first for push system. Push means say what? I want to manufacture 100 cars next year. So I'll arrange material today. I'll start arranging material today. Now what happening? It means I'm arranging material as per future demand. So th this is called push. And if you are following push, so you have to store inventory also. What is pull system? In pull system, our focus is only on current demand. Right now, what we need, we will order only that thing. And it will be supplied within a couple of minutes. Understood? So JIT is the philosophy of which system? Pull system because our focus is on what? On current demand, not on the future demand. Current, what currently we need. So this is a pull system. They will ask you the question, 
it is Porsche pool, you would say it is pool system. Understood? Then guys, this I already told you, pool system now, it's added point, low inventory level I already told you, decreased number of suppliers. Oh yes, because you cannot have arrangements uh, with many suppliers or they should erect a factory close to you, no. Toyota will carefully choose few supplier, maybe one supplier only, right or wrong, and with, with them they will work. Closely they will work. Understood? So here, in JIT system, you don't have many suppliers. You will always have few supplier, but carefully choose and supply. Understood? This is also the next point. I hope so it is added in your mind now. In JIT, we will have a few supplier, but carefully choose and supply the reason because you are going to have a long-term agreement, customer and supplier. That is why service company who is going to provide tires to Toyota, they will invest million or billions of dollars, right or wrong? If they will have a security for their business. Understood? Next is what? Increase number of deliveries. It's true. Number of deliveries will increase because you don't store inventory whenever you need. So you, you ask the inventory at that time. So that is when inventory will be delivered again and Again, so number of deliveries will be more. But under traditional system, maybe you will buy inventory in bulk system, right or wrong? In bulk quantity. Bulk, you know, in big quantity, you will buy, right? So, and you will store, but in jet, you are not going to buy in bulk quantity. You are going to buy only needed inventory. Understood? So that's when number of deliveries will be more. Then guys, we have here some effects on operations. Yes, there are some positive things. Also, if you will follow JIT, I can give you a number of examples. There are certain internal controls. Certain internal controls will be eliminated. You don't need those things if you follow JIT. For example, let's think about it. If you will store inventory, you need staff also to manage, right? You need warehouse also. Maybe you need certain people who will receive inventory. Then you need certain people who will prepare reports for inventory. Right or wrong? Uh, you need some people for inspection of inventory, but here, no, if you follow JIT system, please remember guys, when you follow JIT, it's important one which I'm going to speak now. When you follow JIT, supplier is very close to you, right or wrong? So here quality to control quality of the supplier's product, you don't need inspection team in your department, no. You are using some statistical method, some uh, electronic data interchanges information we, we use, some technology we use to ensure whatever supplier is manufacturing for us, it is high quality product. We don't need inspection teams here in our department. So that is where many controls can be eliminated. Many controls can be eliminated. We don't need many costs can be saved. For example, here I'm telling you, highlighting the point. For example, JIT also may eliminate what? Central receiving area. Central receiving area means we don't need people who are receiving inventory. No. Understood? Hard copy receiving reports. We don't need receiving reports what we have received from them. Understood? Because mostly electronic data interchanges. Data is shared electronically with each other. Okay. And we also don't need what? Storage areas are. Understood? So this is a fact on operation. Plus, here also remember, most of the time when we follow JIT, so we can also manufacture the products in small lot. I'm using word what? Small lot. Lot means to say, for example, I'm manufacturing chairs. I can manufacture uh, one design chairs in one lot, other design chairs in another lot, and we can manage material according to that also. So, but when you manufacture the small lots, so your total setup cost of machines, you know, for example, you're manufacturing pen now using same machine. Now you want to manufacture marker by using same machine. Obviously you need to change setup of the machines. And third time you want to manufacture pencils, maybe same by using same machine, you need to change the setup. Okay, setup cost is less, but in total maybe setup cost will be more if you will work on small lot. I said two words. Mostly once you read the book, Yet I use setup cost is less, but I'm saying no. I'm saying total setup cost will increase because you are manufacturing products in small, small lots. Many times you need to change the setup of the machines. So many times you need a service of engineers to change the setup. 
Understood? So it, it means total setup cost will increase. Remember this point. If an exam person will ask you, setup cost will increase or decrease, in total you will say by following it, this is negative point. Total setup cost will increase if you will manufacture the products in what? In small lots. Here it is written, they are saying production setup cost and time per lot are reduced. Here we are confused, but here what it's written. Total setup cost are not necessarily lower using jet. Total setup cost will increase. If you will make the total of setup cost over a period, like over a period of six months, maybe it will be more. If you are working on small law. Understood? Also remember this point, jet. The word is what? Small lots. Because mostly when we follow JIT, it's, I can give you another logic for this. For example, if you bought a material for LCD and you can manufacture 1000 LCD for that material, now you are stuck because you have to utilize that material first and you have to manufacture what? 1000 LCD. But if you follow JIT, you only order needed item. So I can order only maybe for one type of LCD. Next time I can produce computers also, giving you examples. So small lots are possible under JIT because you don't store inventory. You don't store inventory, right? You are not forced to use the stored inventory first under JIT. Clear, guys? So what about bulk then? Bulk, would, bulk we don't follow under JIT, you know. We don't buy inventory in bulk. Okay, then we have here, guys, another point, implementation of JIT. They are saying that when you want to implement of JIT, it's really, really important point. I will give you an example also. So when you want to implement the JIT, your organization must be reorganized around what are called what? Manufacturing cells. This word is the there. You should remember, oh, there is one word which is called manufacturing cells in JIT system. Like here, what is manufacturing cells? I will give you example. You have two pictures on your screen. Let's you number one, two, three, four. These are machines or these are department. Okay, look at the first picture. Look at the first picture. Department number one is here. For example, first you have to work in department number one on a product. Then product will move to the department number two. Then department number three is here. Then from three to four. Then four to five. Then five to six. Six to seven. It is, to, it is very easy. This picture is easy. From one department, you can move to the second, second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, seventh, eighth, and air product will be finished. Which, which, what do you feel? Which is best system? B is, second is, the, after is best, right? Actually, this is called manufacturing cells. Manufacturing cells means that you should arrange. You should arrange the machinery in that way that material movement should be easy. Even not only material movements. Employees' movement should also be easy. I'll give you example for JIT now for manufacturing cells. For example, you are manufacturing piano. Piano. Okay, so you have a five department: one, two, three, or let's assume three department. In each department, we have, for example, ten people working. How we can divide this three department in manufacturing cells? What I can do? I can hire ten people in this department. In this department, those are multitask people. And they can start the work from scratch and they can end the work on piano. Same way I can hire those 10 people multitasking. Same way I can hire those 10 people multitasking. In JIT system, what we assume? We assume, we assume in manufacturing cells, in manufacturing cells, in manufacturing cells and in JIT system, what we assume? We assume people are also multitasking. You don't need to waste time. You are not specialized only in one domain. For example, you have done your work, you are shifting product to next department and people are absent there and now work is waiting for the people to work on that. The product is waiting now. Understood? So in JIT, what we want, because we want high productivity. So that is why what we want? People, multitasking people we want. And it in JIT also is one more point. See, I'm telling you details, it, it has too many points. In JIT, we want multitasking people. Great. Plus, in JIT, we also want autonomy with the, like, power to take decisions should be with the employees lower level. For example, production is going on. There is some problems. Now they're calling production manager and production manager is on top country and they are waiting for his response or for his email. So they will waste time. But if as a senior manager, 
you will give them autonomy power to take decisions so whenever problem will arise immediately they can take decision and fix it also otherwise they otherwise they have to wait for approval from the top understood so here remember here in jit system we are following manufacturing cell concept manufacturing cell means we are designing machines like this way from the material movement will be easy and employees movement will also be easy and employees must be what multi tasking and employees must have autonomy to take the decisions also that is it this kind of arrangement it could be u shape it could be any other shape also which is more convenient understood mostly your companies if you have visited i'm not sure if you have visited textile sectors like that so they have different system first department then it will go to the second department and machines are more mostly arranged in the line if you are working at this point and you want to move at the last machine so you need maybe kilometers to go there understood nowadays we are arranging machines in a such a way where employees movement and material movements will become easy and jit is uh, in favor of these kind of arrangement which is called manufacturing cells understood so i also i i told you all these guys guys i told you all these points each workers in the cell must be able to operate all machines i use this word multitasking people i told you about what i told you about employees empowerments also understood once whatever i explain once you will go through this so you will understand what it is so i'm not going to highlight every words okay key key words key words i am highlighting okay jit is also called what you can say lean manufacturing expands the concept of jit okay what is lean manufacturing it's another word actually which is mostly attached with the jit system also because even if you will take if you will see the heading of topic it's written jet and lean manufacturing lean manufacturing is what please remember they are saying it is more expanded version of jet understood so lean manufacturing means say try to understand what i'm saying now with minimum input we have to get maximum output, output. it's a kind of efficiency also right we say minimum input maximum output is also called efficiency so with minimum resources we have to get maximum output not only output we also need to focus we also need to provide the customer with what they want okay and meet their expectation customer focus is also there don't make those product which has no value in the market make those product which has value in the market or to whom customers are giving value understood clear so here is the definition of lean manufacturing what is written now you will go through lean manufacturing expands the concept of jet the central focus is on accomplishing more with fewer resources as i told you maximum output with minimum input okay and also we need to provide the customers with what they want and we have to meet their expectation and for this to get maximum production and to satisfy the customers so there are five principles of lean manufacturing which we should follow radical points just learn the lean manufacturing how many principles are there five. five principles you have to memorize these five number one is what value okay let me show you headings number two is value stream number three is what flow and pull number four is what empowerment and number 5 is what perfection many of them you already know let me just explain now principle number 1 of lean manufacturing value means say what value involves identifying the features of the product or service that are valuable for the customer for example mobile phones now you know latest android system or later latest ios system is having more value than old ios and android systems understood you should identify first the features of the product like what customers want what are their perceptions that is called what value identification of the features which should be the part of the product is called what value so value means first identify the features of the product which you want to 
provide to the customers. Identification of features are called what? Value. Or what is important for the customer? Make those products. This is also the same thing I'm saying in two different angles. Understood? You got it? What is value? Second word is what is called value stream. Value stream is what? We are saying that examine every process within the production of the product. For example, when you make the product, maybe product will pass through different departments. Right or wrong? So every department, every activity which you are performing to manufacture the product, you should examine. Why? You know which are value-adding activities and which are non-value-adding activities. What it means? Value-adding activities could be only those activities either which will increase the quality of the product or it will, it will help you to reduce the cost while maintaining the quality. That is called what? Value-adding activities. I'm saying again. Okay, if you didn't understand, I'll give you an example. If you are manufacturing mobiles, tell me customer is looking for features of mobile or is looking for casing of mobile? Features. Features. Doesn't matter you are making case of the mobile with metal or with plastic. Agreed or not? They want security and good mobile, good shape, right? So it means it means the casing is the non-value adding activity, a non-value adding cost. You can replace the metal with the plastic to save it. So again, I'm saying what is value stream and say you should examine every process. Why? Just to identify which activities are adding value and which activities are non-adding non value. Non-added value activities, you can outsource also, you can cut it also. But value adding activities, for example, you have certain people who are working who, who are working on iOS, don't find those people. But who are, because they are value adding, they can create new iOS system. Understood, but if you have people in marketing, these people can be replaced. I'm just giving you um, a rough idea. Doesn't mean, okay, fire the people of other departments, no. It means I'm telling you just identify which activities are adding value, which activities are not adding value. So why we, are, we need this to cut the cost actually. To cut the cost only from where under non-value adding activities. Then what? Low and full. Flow and pull is what? Here it is, guys. It's shortcut return. Only produce what the customer wants. This is flow and pull. Only produce what the customer wants. Understood? That is called flow and pull. If you will go through from here, now what they are trying to say, they are saying flow and pull incorporates designing the production process to be capable of maximizing the flow of the Product initiated by the pull of customer demand. Like you should design those product which is having demand for the customer or only manufacture those product which the customer wants. That is called flow and pull. What was the value? Identify the features. What is value stream? Analyze your process of the production to identify which process is adding value, which is not adding value. Understood? For example, for process, I, I gave you previous example, but this is more authentic example. Production could be a value adding facility, but services after sale could be a non value adding activity. You can outsource also. Right or wrong? Then what? Empowerment. Fourth point is what? Empowerment means to say provides each employees with knowledge and authority to what? to make the valuable and timely decision. In simple words, give the power to the employees. So they can take timely decisions. Understood? Then perfection is the fifth principle. Lean manufacturing, lean manufacturing theory includes the fifth principle as a perfection. They are saying perfection is our goal. Obviously no one is perfect, but if you will keep perfection as a goal, oh, I have to make this product perfect from every aspect. Obviously, obviously, your quality will improve because your benchmark is high. You got my point? So these are five points. What was the first point? Value. Value, value in one word, how would you say? One sentence, identification of features. Second was what? Value, value stream, identification, uh, analyzing of the processes. 
to identify which is value adding activities which are non value third is what low and full only manufacture what the customer wants fourth is what empowerment give the empower to the lower levels employees to take their decisions so it, this way decision making will be quick and the fifth is what perfection is our goal so it will enhance your quality understood so these are five principles so lean manufacturing is the expanded version of jet understood here we have a question now jet system is over so first topic is over 16.1 so here we have a sorry 10.1 uh, morning i taught 16.1 okay so here we go so here we have a which one of the following is not an expected benefit of implementation of JIT. So you have to tell which is not the benefit. Okay, please remember in your <coughs> exam question, they will not highlight these words, which is or which is not. You have to read question very carefully. There is asking which is not the benefit of implementation of JIT. It means number one, lowering total setup cost. Total setup cost will be lower or higher, I told you in JIT. Because you're working in small lot. So you need to change setups many times. Total setup cost will increase. So this is not lower. So this is not the advantage. Actually, this is the answer. Number two, lower manufacturing lead time. Yes, this is the advantage. But this is not the answer. Because the answer is asking which is not the advantage. Understood? That is what? Lowering total rework cost. Obviously, because your focus is on prevention of defects. Instead of identification and correction of the defects. Right or wrong? So obviously, it will reduce. It is the advantage also. The question is what? Which is not the advantage. Next is what? Lower total storage cost. Yes. Because idle inventory level is zero. Yes. Storage cost will be less. So which is correct option? Yes. A. So here we go. Next. Question number two. So here we have another question on your screen. They are saying which of the following internal controls is not one typically one typically eliminated. It means not eliminated when just in time inventory system is introduced. This is the question, right? Which controls will not be eliminated? They are not asking which will be eliminated. They are saying which will no, no, no. Not you remember I told you you don't need site reports, receiving reports, storage. These controls can be eliminated. So question is what? Which controls cannot be eliminated? So number one, central receiving docks can be eliminated. But question is about which cannot be eliminated. Receiving area you can eliminate. Receiving area you can eliminate because you don't have inventory. Understood? Okay, then let me read here. Sophisticated inventory tracking system. You don't need tracking system. Right? Right or wrong? Then it can be eliminated. But question is what? Which is? It cannot be eliminated. Number four is what? Hard copy receiving report can be eliminated. The question is what? Not, cannot be eliminated. That is the question. So here what is written? Sophisticated a statistical method of quality. Sure. Yes, guys, this cannot be eliminated because in traditional inventory system, we need inspectors that are to inspect the inventory. But when you follow JIT, so you use some IT, some these kind of artificial intelligence, some statistical ways to control the IT of the sum, to control the quality of the supply. Understood? So these things are these things will become more important. Cannot be eliminated. Understood? Then, guys, we have another question. <laughs> Next question is the benefits of just in time system for raw material usually include. Read the question very carefully. What are the benefits? Benefits number one, elimination of non value adding operations. Tell me, is it a benefit or not? Yes. Because lean manufacturing is the part of JIT. Understood? So, non value adding activities you will eliminate. This is the benefit. Understood? Understood the benefits of just in time system, they're asking. Number two, maximization the standard delivery quantity, thereby lessening the paperwork of each delivery. So, 
we don't make standard delivery. Standard means, say, for example, I am telling you every time I need 10 tiles, 10 tiles, 10 tiles. This is standard. In JIT system, what is needed, we will order. You need two tiles, you will order two tiles. You need 10 tiles, we will order 10 tiles. You don't make standardized things. That's why it's incorrect. Understood? Next is what? Increase in number of suppliers. No, no. number of suppliers will be less, not more. Fewer suppliers are there, but carefully chosen. Next is what? Decrease in the number of deliveries. No, number of deliveries will increase because you are ordering at the right time only what you need. So obviously number of deliveries will increase. You don't order in bulk quantity. Understood? Only needed items you are ordering. I hope so it is clear, right? So I hope so it's clear option number A. Now guys, maybe this question is uh, maybe easy or C. Let's see. Question. Which is uh, a company is planning to implement a JIT system? JIT is inventory management system. All of the following are benefits expected from the JIT implementation, except what is the question? Simply, which is not the benefit? Right or wrong? Which is not the benefit? There's the question. Number one is what? Higher inventory turnover. It is true, guys. Inventory turnover means say number of times inventory will be sold because turnover means say what number of times inventory will be sold. This is called turnover. How many times you sold the inventory? And I told you, do you remember I told you in JIT we manufacture small lots? Small lots means say turnover means say number of times. Obviously, if you manufacture many lots, small, small, but many lots, so turnover will increase. Turnover will increase. It's true. Okay, some points I missed during discussion, even it is written in the sheet, but I skipped. So I explained through the question. With JIT, when they ask the facts on operation, it's written there on, under that heading. So JIT will increase their inventory turnover. So this is benefit. Question is about which is not the benefit. Next is what? Lower obsolescences and other carrying costs. It is also a benefit. Because storage cost will be very less. Understood? Increased demand. Okay, is it is it true you will follow JIT and demand will be more? No. It's not true. So it means this is not the benefit. It's a, it's the answer question. Next is what? Lower investment in inventory, yes. Because you don't invest in idle assets. It will be a benefit. So option C. So we have a one layer question on your screen now. And I'm giving you time to think about this person. Yes, guys, read it, please. And tell me what is your option. So let's have a look at the question. This question is tricky bit. They're saying which trends in purchasing and carrying cost are most conducive to switching from traditional mentory ordering system to jet order system like actually which trends in purchasing and carrying costs are most conducive like which things are pushing you to shift from traditional to to jet system number one is what they, they gave you two headings cost per purchase order and what inventory unit cost okay just let me explain first things before answering this question in traditional system you order traditional inventory system. You order inventory in bulk quantity or small? Okay, we order in bulk. Mostly in big quantity. Okay, tell me, ordering cost will be less or more because you order one time. Less. It will be less. Think logically, huh? Because you order one time only. Maybe one trucks, one truck you will bring one time. Understood? So ordering cost will be less. But in JIT system, because you order bulk so carrying cost tell me carrying cost will be more or less yes. carrying cost will be more in the traditional always yes because you order in bulk so you will incur one time transportation cost which could be less but carrying cost will be more now think it means these two vectors are there and question is about purchasing and carrying cost it means cost per purchase order was less in traditional but carrying cost was high due to these points due to 
these two points we are shifting to the to the jit system yes in traditional these points are there option a is the correct question is that that's why i told you think it is just a little bit difficult to answer but these are two trends because ordering cost was less and carrying cost was more ordering cost means a decrease carrying cost means a more means a increase these trends are shifting us to shift to the are pushing us to shift to the jet system there is the answer actually understood rest you can go through by yourself now but there is the answer at all we have other questions also please you can tell me jet system inventory turnover will be higher or more it will be higher. I, I didn't read the question. What is the question? But just I'm asking. Inventory turnover will be more or high? Let's go through the question. Let's see it, guys. What is the question? Last question I'm doing for JIT. Remaining you will do at home. They are saying a company changed from traditional manufacturing philosophy to a JIT philosophy. What are expected effects of this change on inventory turnover? Obviously, turnover will increase, I told you. There is increase and there is also increase. It is option A or either A or B is answer. Then what? And inventory is a percentage of total assets. Like inventory divided by total assets multiplied by 100. In JIT inventory, we have a zero less. So percentage will what? Decrease, not increase. It means which should be the option? A. Understood? Because here inventory turnover will increase. Percentage will be? less of because percentage inventory is a percentage of total asset sales understood so option a is the correct answer understood guys now we have some boring discussion uh, that is second topic which is called 10.2 please try to understand only few information is required one ten point two is called what enterprise resource planning and outsourcing is the heading of the topic. It is more important than this. I'm telling you from your exam point of view. Understood? Whatever I'm going to tell you now, it is more important than this. Actually, from this chapter, in my opinion, JIT and theory of constraints. The topics are most important. No, I will explain. You should not skip it. So we have here, guys, first concept that is called what? Material requirement planning. Don't think it's something different. It's nothing. It is a software, actually. I'm not sorry. It is and it was. I guess it was. Material, or it might be there also now. Material requirement planning. It's, it's called MRP, what? There is a one more word will come after some time. MRP2. That is manufacturing resource planning. Manufacturing resource, but this is what MRP is mean to say material requirement planning. Where the word two is attached, that will become manufacturing resource planning. Okay, let me tell you about this. First of all, I'm telling you shortcut story of MRP, material requirement plan. It is a software which we can use to plan the material requirements for the future use. What is it? To plan the material requirement for the future use. You can say it was the it was the starting point of ERP systems. Now you have ERPs, right? It was a starting point, you can think this way. But this soft dedicated software was uh, used to plan the material for future production. Now let me explain your word. Sometimes you will read, uh, look this word in your book or in your notes. Master Production Schedule, MPS. They will use the word MPS. MPS stands for Master Production Schedule. And let me explain and then I'll come back to MRP, this material requirement plan. Master Production Schedule is what? Actually, it is a production schedule, Master Production Schedule. For example, you are Toyota company. You are thinking, you are making plan for next year, how many cars, number of cars for Corolla you will manufacture, how many number of cars for Land Cruiser you will manufacture, how many number of cars for other models you will manufacture, you are making plan. And you are making plan even month-wise. For example, first three months of the year, we will manufacture Corolla. 
just giving you example only. Okay, I, I don't know real planning of that. Okay? So maybe like next quarter we will manufacture land cruisers. Third quarter quarter we will manufacture Fortuner. Let's assume. So this is what is our plan, and we wrote this much units of each car we will manufacture. Now, obviously that is called master production plan. What you are going to produce in coming period. That is called what master production plan, which is prepared date wise, which is prepared. It's also called master production schedule. Understood? Now, <clears throat> once master production schedule is ready, so you also need to plan for the material now. For example, the first three months you are manufacturing Corolla. You need Corolla tires, Corolla engine, Corolla interior, current Corolla exterior, right? You don't need land cruisers things. In next quarter, if you are manufacturing land cruisers, you need tires of land cruisers, engines of land cruisers, interior, exterior, everything. Understood? In this software, we can program. I'm using word program. You have to save the information in the in, in this MRP, material requirement planning. You have to save information. Like this much units you are going to produce. Understood? This much material you need. And automatically in this system, if it has some material in the stock, this system also having the ability it, the system will tell you how much is in the stock, how much you have to buy. And when you have to buy, a system will automatically, can this system can automatically send the order to the supplier also to supply the required. to the required material. Understood? It means this system should be attached with the supplier also. Understood? This was the initial version of ERP system. So now if you will go through and it is now, what do you think? It is full system or push system? Is it focused on current demand or future demand? Yes. It's focused on its push system then, not a pull. It was a push. It is a push. Understood guys? So here, here we go, we will go through. Actually again, they are telling you MRP is computerized system for moving material through a production process according to the predetermined schedule which is called what master production schedule right mrp system enables a company to efficiently fulfill the requirements of mps master production schedule obviously it will help you to fulfill the requirement of mps by uh, coordinating both the manufacturer of the component parts like supplier right or wrong for the finished goods and the arrival of the raw material necessary to create the intermediate component. For example, if you are manufacturing cars, cars you need engines or tires, so they will coordinate, the system can coordinate between customer and supply. So three overriding goals. What are three goals of MRP? Number one, arrival of, we want right part in right quantity and at right. Remember, this is the software which will help you to do these things. And it is a which system pull or Push, push, push system. Understood? So it's written here. Push system and say what? Future. Items are pushed as per the future. 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 Understood? Then it's written here MRP. I'm just going through with you so you will get the idea what's written in your study text or notes. MRP in effect creates what? Schedule of when items of inventory will be needed in the production part. Obviously, you have to give you have to give some inputs to the system, then you can do something for you. Right or wrong? Then if parts are not in the stock, for example, if some material is not in the stock, the system automatically generates a purchase order on the proper date, considering lead time. What is lead time? What is lead time? Lead time is how much time it will take to deliver, you know, from supply to the to, to the production department. So they're saying that if parts are not in stock, the system automatically generates a purchase order on a proper date, considering a lead time. So the deliveries will arrive on time. As I told you, it can send the orders out. Right or wrong? So there are some benefits of MRP. You know, you should remember benefits also. You know, sometimes straight away questions. We remember JIT benefits, similar. Number one is what? Reduced idle time because you will get inventory on right time and right quantity. Understood? Lower 
set up cost okay then lower inventory carrying cost and then what increased flexibility in responding to market changes you have to also need to remember because obviously you are manufacturing the products as per market demand whenever there are change in trend you will also immediately change the product and immediately you will also change the inventory planning also according to that so this point they will also ask in the question increased flexibility in responding to market changes yeah okay like if you are following these kind of software it can help you 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 might be more quicker to respond to the changes in market because everything is properly planned and you can plan properly also understood so, this lower set of cost is in small lots or in total? Uh, this is not small lots if you are manufacturing small lots. But it will help you because you are planning everything in advance. You have planned. Like first three quarter you will manufacture Corolla. Next three qu next quarter you will manufacture Land Cruises. So, setup cost you know, automatically it will lower. Because one time you need for Corolla setup, second time you need for mm -hmm. Land Cruises. You are not making 15 days or 20 days interval. This way, I'm just giving you one justification. So different from right yeah, now. yeah. Setup cost will be lower here. Okay. Then here now we have another software that is called what? Yeah. Manufacturing resource planning. It is called what? MRP2. Okay, it was the expanded version of MRP, material requirement planning. It is expanded version. And that the previous version, which I told you, that was helpful in the production schedule and planning for inventory, right? But this system can perform some extra function also. Which, which function like sales you can handle through this system, inventories management you can handle through this system, schedules, production schedule you can handle through this system, even cash flows you can handle through this system. Okay. It was expanded version of that. And nowadays we have a more expanded version of all this that is called ERP system. That is called what? ERP. ERP, I'll tell you later. Let's do the question first. Number one, materials requirement planning sometimes results in what? Decrease setup cost through? It was advantage. Increase inventory carrying cost. You say anything? Lower inventory carrying cost, not increase. That's why I told you remember these some points. Huh? This is the easiest way to deal with the theoretical question. Memorize the points which are important. Then less flexibility in responding customers or more flexibility? This is not there. Understood? This is also incorrect. Longer idle periods? No, it should. there is no longer idle period. The idle period means say people are sitting waiting for the product. No. Because you are planning your inventory properly. Idle period should be less, not more. Understood? So it means option A. Now I'm talking about what? ERP. Please ask the number, guys. I don't want to go into that much detail. What is ERP? Because yeah, that is something practical you need to know. Right or wrong? It is a software, you know. Right or wrong? Okay, let me just give you idea, theoretical idea. Many of you may be all, 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 are also working on ERPs. If, if, if it is not bigger ERP, at least it is small ERPs are there. Right or wrong? So many softwares are available. Let me just guys tell you, even ERP is having different generations. Previously, it was a traditional ERP system. Now we have a ERP tool. First, let me tell you what is traditional ERP. Okay. Do you remember? Um, RP2 manufacturing resource planning. I told you it can perform work of sales, inventory, schedules, cash flows. Do you remember I said it was limited? But now even inventory management was also there under MRP2. MRP2. Now I'm talking about what? ERP. ERP is the most advanced version of MRP2. And in this you will have only one database. What? I'm using word. One database, you know, where data is stored. Like server, you can say in simple words. You will have one main server. And every department, for example, sales are linked with that database. 
accounting is linked with that, finance is linked with that, HR is linked with that, logistic is linked with that, understood? When production is linked with that, and when warehousing is linked with that, every subsystems are here. I, I would say normally, these are subsystems, like tr tr traditionally, we were having one database for accounting only, separate. Another database for HR, another database for, for example, manufacturing, another database for maybe finance, but now we have a one database and all those subsystems are integrated in one database. You are linked with one database. Understood HR is also working on same database. Your accounting is also working on same database. So it means it is an integrated system with one database. So how we can de define ERP? It is an integrated, it's an integration system of subunits. Integration or integrated system of subunits. Subunits are integrated here, linked with one database that is called what? ERP system. Every work of the organization you can do on this ERP system. And previously, the traditional ERP system can perform only back office function. Back office function is an important word. Don't ignore it. Back office function means office work only. But nowadays, we, we have a ERP two system. ERP two system. So that can also perform back office function, office work also, plus front office function. Front office function is what? I can link my system with the customers. I can link with my system with the suppliers, like my system can be linked with the outsiders, with the outsiders. So that is called what? Front office function, ERP2. Now, if you are, if you are facing difficulty in understanding the concept of ERP, I can give you a small picture. So this picture will always recall you the concept of ERP. Previously, as I told you, you have a different database. For example, this database for accounting. This is the database, for example, for uh, finance. This is the database, for example, for production. For example, this is the database for HR. I'm just giving example. This database is for inventory. Just see, assuming, I'm assuming. Actually, all these databases are called in IT language TPS. TPS word, if you forget, no worry. Transaction processing system. These databases are these softwares can perform only their own transactions and they were not connected with each other. But in ERP system, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? So these are like connected with each other under one database. Understood? So this is like a this is like an integration, integrated system only. Everything is available in one database. Understood? And you know, there are so many ERP softwares are available, SAP, Oracle, different, right or wrong? So different softwares are available. And by the way, uh, we always need, uh, I'm using the word always because every company is different than others. Their operations could be different, way of uh, operating the business is different. So sometimes we need, most of the time, I should not use the word always, most of the time we need customized ERP. Needs, right? As per our needs we want. So for that, what we do, I'm telling you all stories together. So we always first assemble a team from the company, within the company, like maybe we will have people from all affected departments, production, accounting, finance, everything. So we will first work on the needs, what we want, which kind of system we want, right or wrong. Then we can select a company or we can select a consultant who can help us. You can choose software by yourself or you can hire a consultant who will choose a software for you and he will also help you in the implementation and once erp remember the stages i told you first we'll assemble the project team we'll work on the needs and and in the team we should have a representation from different department then we will select a software okay or we will hire a consultant who will select the software for us as per our needs they will customize as per our needs then they will implement then we will test and we will bring it to the use these are the normal stages right or wrong in implementation understood so this story just i told you i told you about back office function and front office function also now the most important these things are just you have to go through right 
Yes, you can go to this. Current generation, I told you, back office function and new generation ERP2, which are called ERP2 system, can perform front office functions also. You can link your systems with customers, with partners also. For example, if you have a joint venture, one company is having joint venture with other company. For example, London University is having joint venture with Indian University. So they can also link their systems. Understood? So it's called partner relationship. Clear? So here we have some advantages. Let me first, because most of the questions are where advantages and disadvantages. So let me explain first, guys, what are drawbacks, which are easy to understand. Then we will go through the advantages. Drawbacks are number one. First disadvantage is losses from unsuccessful implementation. For example, if your implementation will fail or if it is not working as per your needs, then it's happening. So it, you will incur a huge cost because you have already incurred the cost. Implementation, infrastructure, everything. It is a huge loss to the company. This is the first drawback. Sometimes it's happening. Sometimes system will fail. And they failed. Understood? Next is what? Purchasing hardware and softwares. Also, we need sometimes dedicated hardware, certain softwares. So that there you will also incur cost. It's a drawback. Data conversion also is an issue, right? To convert the old data to the new system. There could be some bugs also, some problems also. This is also an issue. Next is what? Training. How to use it? We need to train the people. Maybe extra cost we need to incur. Actually, it, it, it depends which contract you have with your uh, party who is going to implement. But training is also required. If it is not, if training is a part of package, but still training time we have to give, you know, to the employees how to use it. Next what? Design of interface and customization is also an issue. The interface of the software plus customization, what you want. Okay, this is also a, is a drawback, I would say, because it takes time. Then what? Software maintenance and upgrade. It's not like that. You It's same like your mobiles. You bought one mobile, one version. Obviously, with the passage of time, new version will come or maybe you need to update your mobile. So same here. Maybe with the passage of time, you need to change your some uh, requirements or some options which you want to change in the software. So upgradation is required. Understood? Then salaries of employees working on the implementation, it will cost you also. Yes. Understood? Now what are the advantages? Advantages are what? Number one, lower. Obviously, because inventory management will be improved here. That is why inventory cost will be less. Better management of? Because every information is available on a single database. Right? The liquid assets are those assets which can convert into cash easily. Or those assets, simply those assets which can convert into cash easily. Because everything you can track through the system. You can take timely decisions. This is what I mean. Next is what reduced labor cost and greater productivity it will help you to enhance production also because all production, material planning, everything you can do on the software. Enhance decision making because in single database, all information is available. In single clicks, you can make so many reports. Elimination of data redundancy. Data redundancy is what? You don't need to store same data again and again, again and again. In ERP system, mostly data redundancy is less. You save only maybe uh, very fewer times only. Okay. Increased customer satisfaction because if you're using, uh, you're linking with the system, your system with the customers, you can track each other's problems can be solved. So customer satisfaction will increase. Or another way, you can maintain your you know customer's data in your system. Right or wrong? So you can create better relationship with them. For example, bank, bank is sending you always Happy birthday, etc. Why they are our cousins? No. Right or wrong? Actually, it's just a, they are trying to improve. They are stealing our banks. So yeah, so they are trying to improve relationship with us. We will feel, oh, this bank is very good, cares about us, for your money. Right or wrong? Actually, how they are getting information? Obviously, they have a system on the back end. And obviously, ERP system is what I'm saying. Understood? So then they are saying more rapid and flexible response to changes. Circumstances because all the information is available all the time. 
right or wrong so if you want to change something take the seals you can take timely more effective supply chain management because this module is also there supply chain management inside the erp everything can be managed so that is why in advantage is they are touching every department then what integration of global operation yes even you have a presence in different countries so you can be summarize yourself in one database right or wrong so all the time you will have information standardization and simplification of the decision making process it will become more simple you don't need to call accountant give me this report calling production give me this report if you know how to use the system by single click you can get all the reports the decision making will also be simple and better reports you will get than manual understood guys so this is what is the advantages and disadvantages most of the questions are from advantages and disadvantages and what you have realized all those advantages are the same everywhere understood and then i told you about this challenging implementation i told you project team consultant i told you story right you will assemble a project team we should have a representation from different departments all affected departments this is that story you will go okay these are uh, already i told you all these things now we have here yes two three more definitions outsourcing two three more definitions i have to tell you just try to understand again the questions from outsourcing they will ask you from advantages and so this advantage they will not ask you to define what is outsourcing but i am defining a simple definition outsourcing is what for example i am running a company my collection department is not working good they are not calling customers they are sitting and sleeping all day so what i thought i am thinking now to remove these people and just outsource this function outsource means what i will call some specialist companies who are good in managing the receivables i'll call them i'll ask them sir i'll give you 5% commission or this much money i'll give you can you tackle my receivables can you collect the payments so now they are if they would say yes it means i am outsourcing this function i am what what i'm doing mm -hmm. so outsourcing how you will define you are hiring people from outside, outside. instead creation of your own department yeah. we are hiring people from outside to perform your work on a contract basis we will pay to them they will work for us that's it this is called what outsourcing we are not creating our own department no we are taking people from outside like for example practical example we need let's assume internal audit department and i feel let's assume we are not expert in internal audit let's assume but we need a internal audit department for our companies what i can do i have two options i can hire people as employee but i don't want to go for that maybe they will also lie through cv but practically they will not have experience so what i'm going to do i'm going to contact a audit firm deloitte ey these kind of firms and i am going to pay them so they are going to take care of my internal audit function maybe this contract is for one year understood i'll pay to them so now think what advantages i am getting this is outsourcing of internal audit department so what advantage i will get now tell me advantages number one i will get access to the experienced people number two maybe they will use latest technology to perform my work number 3 maybe it will be a cost effective also it will be a cost effective rather than creation my own employees and departments it's better to hire people from outside on contract basis understood more specialist people will be available so these are what the advantages so what are the drawbacks think now maybe you will lose control over your activity because they are taking care not you are taking care of your work now they are taking care so you will lose control not gain control plus they might also leak your information out confidentiality might also be the issue understood these these are drawbacks they will ask about advantages and disadvantages i hope so it is somewhere it is written here you can just go through 
Okay, you will find these points what I said in the story summary. Okay, now we have here what? In sourcing. Then we have a co sourcing. Three words are there outsourcing, in sourcing, co sourcing. I'm explaining how in sourcing. In sourcing is what? Is the transfer of an outsourced function. The function previously it was what? Outsourced. Okay, to an internal department of a company to be managed entirely by the company's employees. Now, company's employees will manage. So, when outsource function you are you are handing over to the internal employees, that is called what? In sourcing. Or you can say this way also when you create your own department to do a work, that is also kind of in sourcing. But remember this proper definition in sourcing is a transfer of an outsource function to an in internal in department. department. Understood? That is called in sourcing. Third one is what is co sourcing. Co Co-sourcing co -sourcing is what? I'm giving you example just to understand. I want to create internal audit department. But I have a fear maybe people are not expert. And I have created a department. People are not expert in, inter in internal audit department. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hire a person from PwC. Okay, one person. He will come. He will do work for us. Plus he will train our employees. Now think in this function, both parties are working. Outsourcer is also working. And we have our own employees. They are also working. They are working together. So this is called what? Co-sourcing. Combination. Combination. So how you will define? Co-sourcing is performance of business function by both internal staff and external sources such as consultants are outsourcing. Then does it? I give examples for internal audit. Understood, guys? Yes. So here, this is what... Uh, okay, so here is here are written. I was saying it's written. Then no, it's written here. Benefits of outsourcing. Please remember these things they ask in the questions. Benefits of outsourcing and limitations of outsourcing. What are the benefits? Number one, reliable service. Why? Because you are getting more expert people from the market. Number two, reduce cost. It could be cost effective also. Number three, avoidance of risk of obsolences. I don't know in which context they have written. But it lets you, if you are outsourcing a department to manage your inventory, then risk can be widened because they're expert, they can sell quickly. Understood? Then what? Access to technology. They will use latest technologies to perform our function. Then what? Limitations. Dependency on outside party. We are going to be dependent upon them. Okay. Loss of control over necessary function because they are taking care of your work. You will lose control. Understood? Great. Question, guys. Which of the following is not a typical benefit of outsourcing arrangement? Which is not the benefit? Number one, access to technology is the benefit. Avoidance of risk of obsolescence is the benefit. Increase control over necessary function? No, it will decrease. Not increase. This is the answer. Reduce cost. Yes, it is the benefit. So question is what? Which is not the Understood? Clear, guys? Another question. Enterprise resource planning ERP system. ERP system integrates what? A financial information among different organizations only? Or no, okay. We deal only accounting and finance in ERP? No. We deal non-financial information also. Not only financial. That is why due to this, only in financial is incorrect. Understood? Right or wrong? Yes, Next is what? Financial and human resource only? No. no. Where is the production, supply chain management? Lot of things are there. It's not about only, only. Whenever, this is also remember guys, whenever word only, must, so most probably those options are incorrect. Not only in this topic. It can work everywhere. Okay? Then what? Financial and non-financial information from organization business process. Yes. It will have so many departments, accounts, finance. Non-financial information is also available in the ERP system. 
Understood? Then, financial and non-financial information from organization accounting process. No, not only accounting process. Here, they again specified the process. No, we will have from all departments. So, which is correct? Okay. 10.3, we are done. And 10.4, you don't need to study. Capacity management. Okay. Answer what about the essay question? Oh, it will come from these topics, whatever I'm telling you. Okay, guys? Okay. So 10.4 must cancel. Mm -hmm.